Today's rum tasting, I am revisiting two drifters, uh, and this is their signature rum. This came from the Craft Rum Club. Again, I've forgotten the month, but I'm possibly going back to June, July 2023. Uh, so I've had it a while, openly and honestly, uh, and I've said it, I've said it openly, wasn't my favourite rum uh, back then. But I've kind of, now that I've got used to it and kind of there it's and revisited it a few as you can tell i've revisited it a few times um it's kind of like it's kind of growing on me a little bit and it's, it's this weird thing it's right it's just you realize on a monday we talk about british uh scratch rums russ and Gemma. hey russ hey Gemma. they distill from scratch quite proud of them everyone's got these when they're sitting up here at distillery, they've all got their own little things that they want to do in the world. Some want to create the best rum. Some want to, like Paul and Jacine up in Matuga, want to create a better life for their, their family back in Uganda. Um, Russ and Gemma's thing is like the, the planet. They want, to, they want to take out more CO2, eco-friendly. They want to take out more CO2 than they put back in. They want to do their bit for um for the universe for the planet and they do that by distilling rum so it's crazy as that sounds um and yes they are obviously rum lovers of course they are but that's their kind of mission they were a b corp and i don't fully understand all this but they're a b corp um business so they were officially put they officially take out more co2 out of the planet than they put back into it through all their distilling they've got electric um, buggies, carts, vehicles that they go around the distillery in or, or go from A to B in. Um, so they're, they're on that sort of kind of journey, that trajectory to kind of be this, I don't know what the word is, but you know, this, this, this business that really does good for the planet by distilling rum and making all us rum lovers happy. Now, this is uh, Two Drifters. I don't know the year that they started actually. Um, I've got to 2019 down there, and I, I've got a funny feeling it's before 2019. I don't know why I've written 2019 down there, but I, I've got a funny feeling it's before that. But if not, um, let's go for roughly, it wasn't too much before that. Uh, so Russ and Gemma, we've done their live, we've done their backstory. You can go and research what they, um, what, how they met and you know what they're all about. Uh, but I just want to give you, I've written down some notes about the bottle and about what they, just a small tiny bit of what they're doing. So for start off, we've got cork, which is natural cork, not artificial, not plastic or anything like that. It's natural cork in there. Um, I've put, uh, so we've got compostable as well. We've got British bottle. It's a lightweight, flipping light bottle made right here in Britain. So there's no... Uh, glass mileage or anything like that involved it's it's all made here in the in britain uh the label is made from sugar cane and hemp which means it's equally easily recyclable um, and as i say they are carbon negative as in they take out more carbon from the atmosphere than they put back into it um what else can we do so we've got the other notes on here off in this so two drifters and i think this is applicable to their white rum as well i'm sure it is and because I'm sure the white rum is um, the base of this, I think. So they ferment for seven days. They have dunder, and I can't, I, I'm looking for, I'm going to come down there, but they've got a dunder pit um, that they kind of use, or what pit in the loose. It's not, don't imagine that as you would do in Jamaican, where it's just open and out out to the elements. You know, they've got a, um, how can we put it for the UK, for, for Britain? We've got a, a trading standards friendly uh, <laughs> if you like. So these molasses is the base, and I've shared the photo of that. That cracks me up. The tanker, it's like this petrol tanker just delivering molasses to them. So you can guess the size of the operation they've got down there. So the molasses, they have a pot still, but I think they use the column slightly on the white rum somehow again this all i'm coming down for a vlog we need to do a distillery tour in the vlog to kind of sort of separate this out um and the barrel in this is so we could talk about this rum it's kind of i've got a little thing here it's kind of french oak um uh, french oak barrel ex madeira casks and uh, imparts a gentle flavor of orange peel and muscovado sugar to it now as i say I th so i think that's giving you the overriding view of this as i say this at the time 
this wasn't, it was kind of like, I was, I like this word, apathetic. I don't really use posh words that too often, but this, I was kind of apathetic about this one. It was like, okay, yeah, yeah, you know, that was kind of my vibe. But having got used to it, as you can tell, that sort of disappeared without me really kind of paying much attention. As in, I've just grabbed it and kind of drunk it, which for you guys at home really means that, do you know what? I kind of grab a bottle and I kind of drink it and I kind of like it. Now on the nose, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I want to be really fully honest with this. I can pick sherry casks uh, on the nose. My experience with sherry casks, I pick bourbon, oak casks and everything. Madeira casks is still kind of new to me. I'm used to Madeira. I've had a lot of play with Madeira back in a past life. I know exactly what Madeira tastes like and smells like. This is a Madeira cask. I don't really pick it on there. What I do pick on the nose is this. It's kind of like... Um, I'm going to come back to Becca from Old Mother Hunt. This kind of industrial um, pot it's inherent it's the pot still it's that kind of not jamaican but it's kind of what i would expect a pot still rum to smell like I, for me smelling it is like the first thing i'm going to think oh pot still it's not is this molasses or sugar cane or anything like that it's like oh that's pot still there is this slight sweet whiny I'm going to say whiny because I know it's Madeira, but I'm not overly convinced that I would get whiny if I didn't know it was Madeira. Um, but it's sort of sweeter. I'll tell you what it is. Bitter orange. Not juicy orange. It's kind of this bitter orange vibe that I get off there. Um, as I say, I do know it's Madeira cask, but I'm, I've kind of got this... My head's gone to this whiny sort of barrel kind of vibes but i'm not convinced i would get there if i'd not known it was madeira but it, i don't want to kid you it does smell quite ethanoly higher abv rum kind of vibes to it it's 40 percent abv um so it's not that strong but i do kind of get that solvent e ethanol kind of vibe that i do relate to a lot of pot still rums. Now on a taste, and I think this is why it comes back to me, because I really do enjoy the taste. I really do. It's this juicy, it's like, the only way I can describe it, it's like when you bite down on a, and I haven't got one, I don't even know what to refer it to, but I like a juicy orangey sherbet sweet. When you bite down on that and it just releases this burst of orange, that's really what I get from it. I get this honey. Um, I don't even remotely get this ethanol-y, alcohol-y kind of vibe from the nose. I get this orangey, not sweet, sweetness scale two, three out of ten again. I'm going to start doing this out of 20 because your bamboos, your krakens have to be more than that. So I'm going to do the sweetness scale out of 20 so it makes sense. So your, your bamboo... 15, 16 out of 20. Your Plantation XO, your Diplo, uh, 9 to 10 out of, out of 20. So halfway, okay? Your Plantation XO, 9-ish. 8, 9-ish out of 10. Out of 20, all right? So you kind of get that where I'm going with this. So your, your Spiced Rum's kind of in the teens. This, I would struggle to give it more than like a three or four. I really don't think that's that sweetness. The sweetness that you probably get off it is that juicy orange, but I don't interpret that as sweetness. It's more of the flavour that's coming through. But the one thing that does intrigue me about this is that aftertaste, the finish. Because it is juicy orange up front. Uh, even on the taste, I'm not convinced I would ever pick that as Madeira cask. And that's perhaps something I've got to work on over the next year or so is taste a few other Madeira casks. There is a, as I know it's, as I've said, as I know it's Madeira cask, there is this kind of whiny element to it. But I, I, I generally think that's because I know it's Madeira. I don't think I'll get that. I don't, I know it's not sherry. 
I know it's not bur uh, bourbon or whiskey or anything like that. I know it's something different, but I can't quite pick what that is if I was going off this completely blind. But it's just this, it's this intriguing thing. It's this intriguing orangey kind of pot still vibe that I get off this rum that just keeps me making, making me want to sip it. It's 40% ABV. It's not overly strong. Again, do I think it's a session rum? No, it's not something that I would automatically have. Oh, I'm going to have another glass of that, a second glass of that. But there is this element to it of the, I kind of, I can't, I can't stop sipping it. I, I can't stop sipping it. And, and I'm kind of in this, in this mindset of that. I, I, I don't know how to quite put this. It's like, do I think, right, you kind of have to bear with me on this. Because this might, Russ and Gemma, this might sound like I'm um, being negative, and it, it, I don't really mean it like this at all. This might come across as I don't think this is a great rum. And again, it's not like I don't think it's a great rum, it's because I'm not used to this rum. I'm not used to this style of rum. I'm at that stage where I kind of prefer those lighter easy going no questions asked rums whereas this asks me a lot of questions it's like what is this what am i not used to this is pot still this is like phew, this this body when and i don't mean pot still in the in like the jamaican sense but this pot still where it's got this rounded robust in it. i like that word robustness to it underneath it you're kind of like oh what's that i can easily drink um Becker's Old Mother Hunt Barrel Age. I can easily drink Lazy Dog's Gold Rum. Easy. No questions asked. Session rum, easy going. This sort of thing asks me more questions. And, and that's the thing we have to dis distinguish. It's not because they are worse rums. I think they are better quality rums. But I'm just not kind of there yet. Um, so again... Uh, there isn't much left, but again, I'm going to put this away and make sure that I don't come back to this because I really want to taste this again in another six months, eight months or so because I think at this point in my journey, I don't appreciate it. I think that's what it is. I don't appreciate it. It's not that I don't like it. I don't think I appreciate it.